Good day, loser. We're going kernel adjacent hacking. Kernel adjacent hacking? What? Okay, if you're out of the loop, this has to do with the Intel CPUs that may or may not be committing seppuku because of requesting too much voltage, or maybe the motherboard manufacturers are doing it. I don't know. All I know is that I've got a bunch of Intel CPUs in the data center that have problems now, some of them more severe than others. Like, half of them are fine, but half of them are decidedly not fine, and a large enough percentage of the half that aren't fine are going to have to be physically replaced. And so diagnostics, like getting to the bottom of that and getting some diagnostic tools in place to figure that out is top of mind. So I've written a patch, I've written a patch for turbostat.c, which is bundled with the Linux kernel, and I've sent that off to lynb at kernel.org for comments before formally submitting it as a patch. Let's dive in. So you may recognize the output of this as TurboStat. This is TurboStat, except there's a new column here, voltage. Voltage? Voltage. But this voltage is not a little misleading as to what it is. This is the voltage that the CPU says that it is requesting through uh, MSR198, which according to the Intel documentation is the, the voltage that is being requested by Intel CPUs. And it turns out this is not part of TurboStat, as far as I can tell, even though TurboStat does have a lot of really useful information about, you know, the residency of, you know, which mode is, which power state basically is the CPU in, what's the package temperature, what's the core temperature. There's a lot of useful information from TurboStat and a lot of programs wrap up TurboStat as part of their thing and uh, use the information from TurboStat in graphs and, and widgets and GUI and, you know, whatever else. Um, as I was digging into this issue in, in the data center on my side, yes, I have a lot of 13900 and 13900K and KS and KF CPUs in the data set, but also 14th gen, but also T-series CPUs. Now, T-series CPUs are low power, and that'll be important in a second because they're, they're 35 watt. I mean, they can request up to 106 watts, but they're 35 watt. And they're really good for things that need a high single core speed, uh, but are kind of bursty. You also see these in HP and Dell ultra small form factor, you know, like business class workstation machines, which from another different data set, seems like they may also be affected by whatever's going on, which is surprising if, you, you know, given Intel's statement so far is that this is voltage related probably, and maybe motherboard and some other stuff related, it's like, Okay, on the Linux side, let's get some tools to dig into that and let's take a closer look at, at what's happening with this kind of stuff. Now, for these systems that we're taking a look at right now, these aren't even gamer systems. These are running on W680 motherboards. And so is W680 motherboard doing something wrong? Is it doing something right? W680 is meant for use in a more 24-7 scenario and it's meant for use in a more 24-7 like industrial business class. They're not gamer motherboards. That doesn't mean they're, no, they're doing something correct, but they're, they're gamer motherboards. And so um, uh, I wanted to take a look at this. Now, the first thing that I wanted to look at is to try to compare notes on the gamer side. And so I happen to have a lot of gamer motherboards. And so I thought, hey, let's plug in one of these T-series CPUs in a gamer motherboard. And it turns out it doesn't they're not they don't really help you when you when you use a t-series cpu in a gamer motherboard it doesn't it doesn't actually give you any useful information yeah this is the rog with a 13700t guess what 1.181 volts just right out of the box so for these t-series processors there is no option to print like core loading versus the voltage that the CPU is going to request for, you know, one, two, three, four cores loaded. We're interested in the voltage the CPU requests when it's lightly threaded, but having a whole table of that information is useful. And so a lot of people use the Asus BIOS for this. And this also works on the Tai Chi Z790, Tai Chi Z790 Lite. But just to show you, T-Series processor, it does not work from the Asus BIOS. And yes, you can use Hardware Info 64 to piece together the information yourself, but in the reports in Hardware Info 64, it doesn't show this. Whereas, yes, if you've got a K-series processor, it shows you. I guess overclockers use this to help bend CPUs. 
Now keep in mind, we're mainly using server boards. None of these are things that are there on server boards. Well, what about Windows utilities? Well, Hardware Info 64 for Windows is basically the program to use to look at, to gather information about your system. And not just the voltage that the CPU is requesting, but also like the load line. You can dump the information here about the load line. Without getting too far into the weeds, the voltage that your CPU is actually requesting and the voltage that's actually making it to the CPU socket are not even necessarily connected to the same reality. Theoretically, according to Intel documentation, there, Intel has a tool that when a motherboard maker designs a motherboard, they put the tool in the CPU socket and it will, it will measure the properties of the VRM and the delivery and the quality of everything. And so if you look at the Intel specification for like the T-series processor, it can tolerate up to a, like a 1.7 mega ohm, you know, load line or 1.1 mega ohms is like more in line with like the desktop series processors and, and everything else. But at the higher end of those ranges, that's generally meant to go with a lower quality board or a, a board that, you know, has a, uh, properties such that you need that kind of resistance in order to do stuff on the load line. And what that's talking about is you send the CPU a certain voltage, but when the CPU actually uses the voltage, it's going to pull the voltage down because the current is also controlled. So you get into a situation where maybe the voltage is too high because the motherboard can actually deliver current, whereas the CPU needed the higher voltage in order to get the boost started, you know, at 5.8 gigahertz or whatever. But then as the CPU is actually doing stuff, it will pull the voltage down as a result of doing work. And so even though the CPU is requesting 1.5 volts, the voltage at the socket when the CPU is under load, if you measure it, will be lower or substantially lower than that. That's a board design EE thing. It doesn't really matter for anything that, that we're looking at here, except maybe to have as diagnostic info. The other part of this that is interesting is that different CPUs will request different voltages depending on the individual quality of a CPU. So you can kind of use this as some telemetry to figure out if your CPU is uh, a good i7 or an i9 or a bad i7 or an i9 because a good one will, will require less voltage at a certain frequency a bad one will, will require more voltage at a certain frequency and if you have a bad one that requires more voltage at a certain frequency and we've discovered that something is causing degradation that maybe those cpus are the ones that are more likely to degrade because some of these are fine some of them are decidedly not fine and so so I thought on Windows in Hardware Info 64 that it might print a table similar to the table from Asus's BIOS or something like that, or at least that's what I was told on Twitter by, by Buildzoid, or that's what I understood. And there's nothing in the report here that is similar to what you get from the Asus BIOSes. You can kind of piece it together yourself from the sensors part of Hardware Info 64. So like if you run Hardware Info 64 and you look at, at this, this will show you what the CPU is requesting at any given time, but it doesn't like put together a table. So it's trying to put something together like that for Linux so that we could just have a table of like, this is what your CPU is going to do under these different load conditions. But like Windows, it's a little bit DIY. You're going to have to, to do it yourself. So on this, this is a, a desktop machine with a 13700K uh, in Windows. And so mostly you can see here that it's, it's never really requested more than 1.5 volts that Hardware Info 64 has caught. And mostly it's, it's considerably less. And, you know, it is that 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 volt uh, at the low range. And then, you know, 1.3-ish, you know, for just normal background tasks operating. I guess this is a 14700K. So this is a sort of desktop CPU, 14700K. You know, it's only like 1.3, 1.4 volts nominal. It's it's never really requested anywhere above 1.5 volts. It's getting close to 1.5 volts, but it's not not really done anything like that. But there's no table in the report that's going to show you something like what you see in the ASUS BIOS, which is unfortunate because remember the T-series CPUs, you don't get anything in the ASUS BIOS at all. And so it's it's useful for me to just look at my program and say, okay, Yes, this is actually working correctly. So I've sent a patch. There's a patch on the forum. You can go download it now if you want to compile your own turbostat.c. Uh, it's pretty easy. Just download the patch. You can clone the Linux kernel. You don't have to compile a custom kernel. It does not require modifying the kernel. This is a utility that is bundled with the kernel to give you stats on, on your system. And so with turbostat, you can just apply the patch. All the, all the code changes are inside turbostat.c. It's really not a big deal. You can run patch to patch TurboStat, and then once you do, 
You run make. And then make will hopefully produce turbostat. And then you can do dot slash turbostat. Now, I didn't modify the output of turbostat, so I didn't want to break any existing scripts that might depend on turbostat. But you can do dash capital V, uh, dash I for interv interval 0 0.2 for every 200 milliseconds. And so this will run turbostat and give you some info, including the voltage that your CPU is requesting. So maybe useful for logging, adding to your logging scripts or, or anything else like that. Um, now the actual patch for turbostat.c is, is pretty trivial. MSR198 on each CPU core tells you the, the voltage that that CPU is requesting. And again, the voltage making to the CPU is not necessarily the same as the voltage requested by the CPU, but we can at least dump the contents of that register and print it on screen. And that's basically what TurboStat is set up to do. This is this is just an elaborate mapping of MSR registers to what the CPU actually outputs. And so all this really does is decode the bits in that register and convert it back into a voltage and print it for each core in the system. Each core, not thread, core. That's pretty much all it does. When you want to get more fancy, you've got to read from more MSR registers or you have to read from more MSR registers really quickly because it fluctuates a lot, very, very quickly, very often number of times per second. And so if you've got a really, really fleeting voltage spike request, you don't necessarily catch it with these tools because even if they're running hundreds of times per second, you may still miss it. There's another utility that I'm aware of for Linux that'll give you the voltage called i7z. And i7z is an interesting program. Whenever it's, whatever it's doing during this startup phase, if there's a background game process running, the game will hitch. And so I don't like running i7z on a system that people are actually using. Now, because we're looking at performance oriented stuff, you're gonna wanna set your CPU power governor to performance. So just CPU power frequency set governor performance. And you can see that our power jumps from 0 0.7 volts to 1.2 volts. So when the system is just idle, otherwise, 0.7 volts similar to what you see on Windows but when you are in performance mode the CPU is sitting at a, a little bit higher power state by default you can also run stress ng stress ng is not a perfect program for stressing the CPU but you can use you can run stress ng to uh, make one CPU busy, specifically CPU zero. And so we can see in our i7z that our C0 state is 100% and our vCore went up just a little bit. Little, little, little boost there. It's, it's fluctuating a lot, which is, which is normal. Uh, one interesting thing about i7z is if you load the hyperthread counterpart, so like core zero or core one is thread zero, core two is thread two, or it's thread one, it's the hyperthread. If you load, like this, the hyper-threaded core is fully loaded. It doesn't really show you that in i7z. So i7z is a little misleading in that regard. Whereas task set actually does these lines where you, you're missing some columns. Those are your hyper-threaded cores. They don't, a hyper-threaded core doesn't have a voltage because it's really a part of its, you know, the other core. So it's the same. There's no use to, to print it out because it's not really a full core. It's just an extra thread. Now toward something that's like the output from the ASUS BIOS, I wrote another utility called level one vid. And what level one vid does is it probes your CPU and tries to figure out which the best CPUs are, which in, in our case, uh, core eight and nine are the best CPUs. And so it will go through and try to create load on those CPUs. And it'll also log if it sees the voltage spike above uh, you know, 1.3 volts, it'll actually color it yellow. And so my little utility will run through and create different load scenarios, juggling load among ever how many cores. And we can see that, yes, we can create boosts that are 5.5 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz for like the one or the two core boosts. Um, we can create some, some situations where the voltage will spike to like 1.4, but in doing this type of logging and dumping information as different amounts of cores get loaded, I've never really seen it spike above 1.5 and it is really interesting that the 1.4 1.5 volt requests from the cpu are when the cpu is lightly loaded but like if we go full tilt and load down all of the e cores and all of the p cores it usually stays in like the 1.3 to 1.4 range it doesn't it doesn't even like the lower 1.4 range it doesn't even approach 1.5 it only approaches 1.5 
um, when we've got you know one or two cores that can really boost to those higher clock speeds. So yeah, there is something to keeping the CPU frequency below 5.5 gigahertz, it looks like. But these utilities, you know, the patch for turbostat.c is on the level one forum. You can download that and you can run that today. I'm working on cleaning up my utility to make it a little bit better, so stay tuned for that. That's gonna be really, really interesting, I think, just in terms of having uh, having some more utilities on Linux to give us some better insight into the voltages that the CPU is requesting. Because I thought that would be handy and interesting and something fun. All right, I'm Wendell, this level one, I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. Woo, go level one Linux team! Thanks to all our patrons and Floatplane and everybody else for supporting this. It's really awesome. Thank you. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you in the forum.